So without further delay, I am honored to introduce to you Dr. Carolyn Stone, the 2015 UNF Distinguished Professor. <laughs> Congratulations. Really, that was a special moment. I'll put this on your chip for you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. This I know. If I had been at any other university, I would not have enjoyed the opportunities I have here at UNF. From the highest offices of this university to the colleague around the corner, people have w been willing to risk. In 1998, UNF set aside business as usual. They disarmed their organizational ego and they said, yes, you can move out of the traditional and build a new program. Thank you, President Delaney, Provost Trainum. Thank you to the UNF Faculty Association and Foundation, students, administrators, and faculty. Faculty, those of you who are new here to UNF, you have chosen well. I envy your journey ahead. This is one university where you can really dream it and do it. Chris, thank you for that introduction. And Sajel, oh my goodness. What a gift you've given me. Jennifer Kane, thank you for the nomination. And I, I would like to say congratulations to my fellow awardees, especially honored to share this with Dominique Goose. Where do I start? There's so many people who are responsible for the program we call SOAR, Supporters of Academic Rigor. So many UNF affiliates from Duval County, from the community, and UNF members who have made their mark on SOAR. But I have to start with Dr. Betty Soweddle. Dr. Soweddle in 1979 was the first UNF Distinguished Professor, and she was my first graduate professor. I, uh, I loved her. She was my mentor, formidable personality. Anyone in here have the opportunity to know Betty? You know what an amazing woman she was. I was on a failed search in 1994 for a counselor educator. My wonderful colleague, Sandy Hens, returned to me and said, you apply. I hadn't even thought about it, but prophetic times because this was what I wanted to do is change the preparation programs for school counseling. And I was just about finished with the dissertation. I only had... Um, little bit to go, and I was, it was the first in a line of research around equity issues. I was looking at 6,000 mathematics subtests to see in the top quartile who got the gatekeeper math of Algebra 1 and who was relegated to the dead end math. Stratification of opportunity early on in eighth grade. Or was it school assignment? Was it ethnicity? Was it gender? Was it... Um, was it socioeconomic status? Dissertation finished, I entered UNF in 1995. And I, I know this for certain, there wasn't a happier or luckier counselor educator than I was that day. I could now call Dr. Sowettel colleague. She took me around that first day, it is etched in my memory. We walked the hall, she introduced me. Dr. Pritchy Smith walked by with his long ponytail and in that dry sense of humor she had, oh, if only I had a pair of scissors. <laughs> that was Betty. I just adored her. But there was something she said to me that day that was no laughing matter. She squared me up with her eyes. You know how she could do. And she said to me without any ambiguity, Carolyn, take that school counseling program and jettison it right on out of the mental health program. Ooh, I got my marching orders before I even um, found the restroom. So, I, it was prophetic words because two years later, the Education, the education Trust, a nonprofit out of Washington, D.C., they put out a request for a proposal. And what that request said is universities change the way you prepare school counselors so that underrepresented youth have a better chance at closing the information gap the access gap, and the attainment gap. Trailblazer Pat Martin wrote this request for proposal, and it resonated with UNF. But it required dean support. Enter Kathy Caston. As my friend Amy Boggs says, 
There, are ten, there may be 10 reasons why a dean would say no, but she only needed one good reason to say yes. And she said yes, and she allowed us to move out of the traditional and, and create this standalone program, this non-tenured assistant professor nobody to create a new program. So to Dean Kathy Kasten, pivotal moment. One of those pivotal moments where the right leader was there. Laurel Anderson, supervisor of guidance. I needed to have a partner in order to get this grant. There were 10 good reasons why Laurel could have, should have said no. 240 school counselors for whom she was responsible. I knew how hard the job was. I had lived it for five years. But Laurel only needed that one good reason to say yes, and, and yes, she did. She signed on as partner, and her mantle has been carried forth by some pretty amazing women, some very on-fire women, two of whom are UNF Alumni of the Year recipients, Joni Shook and Nan Worsowitz. <clears throat> They just this week, just this month, passed the mantle to some SOAR graduates, Catherine Beckett-all, Gail White, um, and, and Beth Jenkins, and a SOAR spouse, <laughs> Nicole Brown. Um, and at the helm, at the head, is our wonderful SOAR graduate, Wendy Dunlap. Pat Martin, a giant in the field of school counseling. She's the one that gave UNF the opportunity to realize the vision that we had for school counseling. She was an officer at the Education Trust, and she had about 80 applications for this grant, and she chose six, one of which was the University of North Florida. Pat has always been my Mufasa to, my, to this Simba. She is just one of those people that once you know her, you're never going to let her go. Pat, never interested in being popular. She's only interested in doing what's right for kids. How does it go if you want to lead an orchestra? You have to turn your back on the crowd. Pat is not interested in popularity. She's interested in what can we do for equity for kids. Pat, I dedicate this speech to you. Okay. <laughs> we had 17 new courses. You know how the APC process is, faculty? We had 17 new courses through the APC process, but they were just on paper. What are we going to do now? We have to breathe life into this program. Enter Dr. Rebecca Schumacher. Oh, my. Her ability to work on behalf of the kids of Jacksonville and her ability to do what's right for the school counseling profession is unmatched. Becky became my colleague and quickly SOAR became a living, breathing thing, followed by wonderful colleagues, Drs. Jansen and Parikh. We had Sajel for a couple of years and, and Dr. Maxis, Dr. Ripple, Dr. Keith. They have made SOAR uh, what it is. So we had this grant, but why change? What was wrong with the traditional? Why move out of the old and start something new? As President Delaney says, we intend to attract 2,000 new first-time in college applicants. It starts in kindergarten with those school counselors trying to make sure that all kids have the information gap closed, that they know what they need to know in order to obtain a higher education. Go with me in your imagination, if you will. Put in your mind's eye 100 Hispanic kindergartners. Look at that long line of little faces that started two weeks ago. If the NAEP data trend is accurate and nothing changes, 15 of those Hispanic kindergartners will receive a bachelor's degree. Unacceptable. Of 100 Caucasian kindergartners, only 40 will receive a bachelor's degree. If you look at the 100 African-American black kindergartners who started two weeks ago, only 23 will receive a bachelor's degree. But we all know the correlation. 
between income and education. It's a lockstep upward trajectory. Well, that is till you get to the PhD and then it dips. <laughs> but it's not just about fair. It's not just about equity. It's about our country. We cannot sustain ourselves as a nation of haves and have nots. Soar's mantra is, if I have the power to imagine that things can be better, then I have the power to change them. Laura Aki, Inglewood High School counselor, change them, she does. A couple of years ago, she wanted to take 200 students to the National Admissions College Fair, the NACAC Fair. She needed $250 for the bus, the buses. Um, no, didn't have it. She went to the Jacksonville Giants and got $1,000. Last year, 450 Inglewood shirts came through the door armed with the attitude, believe in me, I know what I need to do and I'm here to make a difference in my future and the future of my children. Watch out, Laura's coming to the NACAC Fair in October and she's probably going to have the whole school with her. And her feeder pattern, too. I'm looking for that this year. Jeannie Powell, Sandalwood High School counselor. Jeannie paired up with SOAR. She did our 10th, what we call Instant Decision Day. What we do is we bring admissions people from around the state of Florida, and they instantly admit these seniors into their school, armed with all they need to sit down in front of an admissions person. 94 admissions last year, $274,000 even more so at Jackson High School where we work, and, and even more so at Reigns and Rebalt. This year we'll do number 11 and 12. Kathy Mortensen, Douglas Anderson, her LGBTQ students are safe there, but she knows that the world can be a, a very different place. So what Kathy does is she brings with intentionality admissions people who can help her students see that there is safety on their campuses, but not just safety, celebration. Marixa Seiler, R.V. Daniels, elementary counselor, she knows that college begins in kindergarten, and she brings in the sororities and fraternities of the neighborhood to help her kids learn about college. These little kindergartners and first and second graders uh, being able to talk about what the free application for federal student aid is. It is said that passion comes from personal experience. It's certainly so in my case. Wonderful, hardworking parents. They were able to help me learn personal social consciousness skills, but they were not able to help me negotiate the college admissions process. In fact, Pam Baldwin sitting next to me in math said, do you want to ride to the ACT this Saturday? And my reply was the ACT. Granted, it was only five years old, but still, I knew nothing about college admissions or financial aid. So I went to the local state college, worked, checked my books out of the library, and paid my own tuition. This first-generation college student, it was by happenstance that I got there at all, by accident. Soar graduates, they don't want accidents or happenstance. They want every student to know what they need to know in order to advantage their future. SOAR students and our First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama. Her initiative is called Reach Higher, and it's all about supporting all American youth for post-secondary education. Michelle Obama had her first convening at Harvard University, July 2014. Her second convening she brought to San Diego State last November. Her third convening November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th will be at the University of North Florida. <clears throat> I went to the provost and to my dean with no budget, no money, and no social capital really to raise any money. So they should have. Ten good reasons why they could have nudged me right back to Building 57, to my office. But my dean and the provost only needed one good reason to say yes, and that is kids are going to be advantaged. So 50 states will come to UNF in November 
determined to dramatically impact the post-secondary going rate, especially for those traditionally underserved. Education is the leveler. It's the path to a better future. It always has been and it always will be, and it's even more so today. UNF, we can't do everything, but there is so much UNF has done. We should be very proud of this university and what we've done for first-generation college students. It's pretty impressive. We are learning more and more every day what works to maintain first-generation college students. We know that the first 12 months is critical. The more we can do to put our uh, arms figuratively around these first-generation college students, the better our chances are of retaining them. UNF works closely with first-gen students, with Jacksonville commitment, with scholarships, with financial aid workshops. I'm very proud of this university, what we do. But there's always more we can do. Let's make exceptions to the rules. Soar's mantra, learn the rules so you know how to break them properly. <laughs> Let's learn the exceptions that we need to make for these students whose a university culture is so different from the culture in which they have been working and, and living. Your discipline might be biology, psychology, technology. It doesn't really matter. It's about our community and our country. Education is enhanced by sitting next to people who diversity and gender identity and language and ethnicity. We want that diversity at our university. Let's go back to those 300 kindergartners. Let's put a face on one of those kindergartners. Her name is Rachel. She left her Head Start program two weeks ago and entered one of our urban schools. Rachel's better prepared than most because she had one of those coveted Head Start seats. Rachel has to be educated to the same standard as other young Americans because she will take her place in the same economy. Rachel and all students, because they breathe, deserve to have the information, access, and attainment gaps closed. Of this, I am certain, this university's strong in reputation, as President Delaney says, delivering an exceptional education at an exceptional value. UNF can use its status and influence to grow a reputation as the university with the best track record in the nation for supporting and advantaging our first-generation college students. UNF, let us not stand still until every Rachel, every Rachel is part of the success equation. Thank you. Actually, I dare anyone to deny Dr. Stone when she comes into your office with a new idea for this conference. Uh, she said we supported her, and the fact was we were scared to death not to. <laughs> Carolyn, your words, your work, your passion inspire all of us, and we are just deeply moved by that, uh, that presentation. I want to offer my congratulations to all of the award recipients today, so let's give them one more hand. So thank you all for attending today's convocation program. This concludes the program. Uh, I would like to ask that the awardees uh, stand for the recessional, if you will. Thank you.